Not a critic here. All material in the video used is owned by the corresponding copyright holders. Not a critic does not own or claim to own the copyright. Please help support the filmmakers and those involved with the development of said work by purchasing a copy to enjoy. Purpose of the video is for criticism, comment, research, and teaching under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976, under fair use. Hello everyone, wherever you are, glad you're here. I'm not a critic. Today we are diving deep with the mystery. Centered on a classic game from the late 40s, this is Clue. Let's get into it. The year is 1985, 36 years after the release of the Clue board game in 1949. Director Jonathan Lynn takes on the challenge to create a comedic murder mystery movie based on the popular board game. Six guests, a cook, a maid, and a butler must work together to discover who the murderer is before the police arrive. One aspect that can make or break a film is the individual characters, giving you either a beautiful flow that highlights the strengths, or a cacophony of bad acting. Mrs. Peacock is portrayed by Eileen Brennan. She's the wife of a politician in Washington. Never shy to talk and get the conversation started, she puts on a clean persona but don't be mistaken, she has a few secrets in her vault. The reason for her attending the gathering is blackmail. Taking bribes in return, her husband boats will go towards certain lobbyists. Wadsworth, depicted by Tim Curry, is the butler given the task of bringing everyone together to discuss what to do about the blackmail. His wife committed suicide because of the pressure of being exposed. All he seeks is justice to avenge his wife and bring closure. Mrs. White, represented by Madeline Kaw, is a reserved, soft-spoken woman, widower to multiple men who pass under mysterious circumstances, most recent being a nuclear physicist. And to keep it hushed from the public, she has to give regular payments. She came down looking to figure out who's behind it all. Professor Plum, portrayed by Christopher Lloyd, is currently being blackmailed by an unknown individual. Once a professor of psychiatric, specializing in paranoid and homicidal lunatics, is now working for the United Nations. After getting involved with one of his patients, his license was revoked and can no longer practice. Trying to keep this information under wraps, he is now forced to pay. Mr. Green is depicted by Michael McKeon an employee of the federal government and also a secret homosexual. His work revolves around being credible and fears that information will change everything he has worked for. A mischievous one, this Mr. Green. Colonel Mustard, represented by Martin Mole, is a reserved older gentleman. On the other hand, has a taste for young women to keep him company. He will deny it, but physical photography will tell otherwise. Hoping to keep it a secret, he comes to the meeting today to keep his reputation alive. Miss Scarlet, portrayed by Leslie Ann Warren, a beautiful, confident woman, is invited because she is being blackmailed. As the others hold back in fear, Miss Scarlet lays it all out. She reveals that this is due to her role of providing a service that connects men to young women. Yvette, depicted by Colleen Camp, is the perky French maid being very proper and kind to all the guests who attend the assembly. Quickly, a good demeanor is established, but as events are revealed, her involvement is more complex. Mr. Body, represented by leaving, remains the guest of honor. His involvement in this conspiracy is the blackmail Ur, the ringleader holding all the evidence. Information that is keeping everyone in a state of panic. The cook is portrayed by Kelly Nakahara. She is only shown in a couple of scenes throughout the movie. Displayed with poise, this character intrigued me the most out of the cast. Don't let her short screen time discourage you as this individual is a part of a bigger picture that is revealed a little further down the road. Jonathan Lynn brings a very interesting build up throughout the first several scenes of the film. Opening up with the very ominous dark vibe with rain, lightning, and Wadsworth navigating himself through the road, finally approaching a huge mansion in the hills. After a nervous interaction with the guard dogs, the point of reference turns to the maid Yvette, revealing that her role for her attendance was requested and given instructions to follow. Quickly, we follow up with the reveal of the cook, Colonel Mustard, Mrs. White, Scarlet, Professor Plum, Mrs. Peacock, Mr. Green, and ending with Mr. Body. Something key to point out at this point is that everyone, absolutely everyone, was sent a letter informing them that attending would be to their benefit. 
raising the importance of just how following the instructions, you know the rules, is a huge premise that will become a staple throughout Clue that kind of pushes the momentum forward. There is no doubt that there is an elephant in the room. Once all the invited guests arrive, a moment of awkwardness rises. A tension builds as everyone looks around trying to figure out what they might have in common and what the motives of them being there. It is revealed that everyone is being blackmailed by an individual called Mr. Body, forced to pay money in order to keep information a secret. Information that under the wrong hands might result in everyone losing a job, credibility, or even worse. But why? Wadsworth reveals from a manila envelope everyone's crimes. Starting with Professor Plum, a psychiatrist who crossed the line by involving himself with one of his patients, losing his license to practice. Mrs. Peacock, a politician's wife. Her husband takes bribes in exchange to cast his boat towards certain lobbyists. Scarlet is a true entrepreneur, in charge of connecting lonely men to young attractive ladies for a fee. Colonel Mustard turns out to be one of his known customers of Scarlet. Mrs. White has gained a reputation for her husband's dying of mysterious causes. Mr. Green, an employee of the federal government, fears that his secret of being a homosexual will discredit his reputation. Wadsworth's wife was also being blackmailed and committed suicide as a result. It is interesting as different as these crimes are, they are all put under the category by Mr. Body as being un-American. This brings up a question of how far somebody is willing to keep their honor intact. There it is, the deep dark secrets all hanging out. Where does one go from this situation? Mr. Body goes on the offensive and offers an ultimatum with all the others at attendance. From a very fancy case, he hands everyone a lethal weapon. A knife to Mrs. Peacock, a lead pipe goes to Mr. Green, Professor Plum a gun, Mrs. White a noose, and a candlestick to Scarlet. Kill Wadsworth and everyone keeps their secret or arrest Mr. Body but be exposed. With a flip of a light switch, a scream, and a loud gunshot later, the lights are turned back on. A strategic zoom with a camera to reveal an alive Wadsworth and a quote-unquote dead Mr. Body. The police are due to arrive within an hour. The killer needs to be identified or risks going down for the crime of murder. What follows is a surprisingly well-constructed dialogue with witty jokes and references that will keep giving every time you rewatch, giving value to Clue, and holding well to modern comedies over 30 years later. In conclusion, Clue was a loaded baked potato.